I think it starts probably in 88 as the collection of talent, the personnel, starts to fit Buddy's scheme. And seeing the Bears and thinking about the 85 Bears and, and Buddy was, you know, a huge part of that. I think that kind of sent us on a path where we need to be that type of defense. We need to be that dominant. The 91 season came on that we were thinking everything's going to get well, you know. As a new head coach, a lot of us didn't agree with the firing of Buddy, uh, and it was pretty much known. We just came together and basically just wanted to go out and do this for Buddy. We knew that with a new coaching staff coming in that there would be a, a lot of changes and didn't know how long we would be able to keep it together. We had gone through learning Buddy's 46 defense, and then after Buddy was fired, Bud Carson came in. Bud Carson, who was the architect of the Steel Curtain, along with the aggressiveness of what Buddy Ryan was trying to do, was just like this great marriage and a perfect storm, so to speak. Very similar in philosophies, you know, attacking the quarterback, uh, creating pressure. Just a few wrinkles different than Buddy would do. There were some things that we didn't really feel comfortable doing, but over time, as we began to see how that defense was just as aggressive, and we started to buy into what he was trying to get done. There was not a question in anyone's mind on that team that we were prepared to win the Super Bowl. We had done everything defensively. Uh, we were ready and poised, and Randall was kind of hitting his stride. For years, the offense had been carrying the, the defense, and once we kind of figured it out, now we felt like we had some balance. When Randall got hurt, we weren't too enthused about our situation on, our, on the offensive side of the ball because Randall was a huge percentage of our offense. What do we do? I mean, this is our guy. I mean, this is you know, the National Football League's poster boy, the ultimate weapon. We just knew that we could win with our defense. We went out there and we had been winning with our defense. It was about us sending the message. It was about us instilling intimidation and fear because if we had to play the Giants twice a year and the Cowboys twice a year and the Redskins and the Cardinals twice a year, we wanted to send a message that we was gonna kick your ass twice a year, every year. And if you thought you were hurt the first game, wait to the second game. That's another throwback from Buddy Ryan. You know what I mean, he was one of those guys that, you know, it ain't bragging if you prove it every week. Defensively, we just like, you're gonna take what we give you and that's it. You take this right here, this little piece of bologna sandwich or chicken sandwich or whatever we're going to give you and be happy with it. Now, if you want to try and get more, we're going to hit you in the mouth with it. Third down and 11 for the Oilers. The ball at the 30. Moon under a rush and the Eagles bury him. They get him as John Booty was blitzing and he got him along with Seth Joyner. The House of Pain game was a huge game for us because you had one of the most vaunted passing games in the league against one of the most dominant defenses in the league. Everybody heard about how good we were though defensively. And, um, but to see that on Monday night, it proved to the world, there ain't nothing to talk about. They is for real. Moon fumbles the football. It's picked up by Seth Joyner inside the 10, and the Eagles will have a first and goal. Moon with a second fumble of the night. And Seth Joyner, like lightning, reached out and picked it up. Seth Joyner is playing a game of games. They felt like they were just going to go out there and just dominate us with their passing game. And we took it personal up front. They sent it out there. They set it up. They wanted this physical matchup. They wanted to see who the tougher defense was. So they challenged us. They had some receivers that was talking trash. We're going to score. We're going to run this ball up and down the field. We're going to do all the things that we do. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good you are. We get to the game. And West kind of just started it off with this great explosive hit across the middle on one of the receivers. And the guy, I remember looking over and, and nose bleeding and his nose was flint the other way. <laughs> We're kind of looking at this guy and then looking at the sideline saying, you know, to their defense, you put this on your guy. And it's going to be like this all night long. Boone takes his drop. He surveys the field over the middle, completes to Drew Hill, who fumbles the football and it's recovered by Wes Hopkins. He rolls. He has time. He fires, completes the pass, and the football is jolted loose and recovered by Otis Smith. Boone takes the ball, and he is being hit, and Seth Joyner is pulling for the football, and they flatten Boone back inside the 10. Seth Joyner has just been outstanding in this game. We knew they were a finesse team, and Buddy taught us, he said, you know, the way you beat a finesse team is you hit them in the mouth because they don't like the physical nature of the game. You know, they try to beat you with trickery. They try to beat you with the quick pass and all that kind of stuff. He said, but if you batter them, they will fold up the tent. There's people that walk in a fight, and then there's people who, you know, sneak into a fight. 
we wasn't one of those ones that snuck into place. We came in there, you ask for a fight, you're gonna get one today. When you look statistically at what we did to that offense and what they had done to everyone else leading up to that game, I mean, it was unbelievable. And the Eagles have it. Those Clyde Simmons come up with the football. The swagger came from everyone having each other's back. If I bust the coverage and the guy's open, but the quarterback gets sacked, and you know, you go back to the huddle and you give a high five to Clyde or, or Reggie because they had your back. When we were off the field, we were constantly together, so it was like we were never apart, and it was like a brotherhood there. Buddy understood the importance of unity. He was all about figuring out ways to, you know, bring us together and, and bond us. We ate together, we bowled together. Those that play golf, play golf together. And we would all go to Florida, be a part of Jerome Brown's camp. We'd go to Tennessee and be a part of Reggie White's camp. What he was trying to do was to keep us together as much and as often as he could. When you create that kind of camaraderie, now it's not all about me when I play, but I'm playing for those 10 guys around me. If you're gonna fight my brother, you're gonna fight me. And once you get those things, you understand that, hey, it's more to it than just you know, line up and X and O's. It's a family that you gotta care for each other. Bakeman straight back. He steps up and then he takes a hit and down he goes, sacked by Jerome Brown. Those kinds of games are the ones that are like etched in your mind. From what I can remember, there was a lot of trash talking going on before that game. I think Michael Irvin had made the comment about we had some midgets back there or something that he was gonna do all this against our defense. It was almost like the perfect day. We always felt like we we're gonna beat Dallas. We always felt like, you know what, we're gonna play dominant against them. Aikman looking downfield, he's setting up and he sucked again! They've got him! And this time it's Golick. They are making mincemeat of the Dallas offensive line. The next thing you know, Troy's running for his life. They can't protect him against, and we haven't even blitzed yet. We showed him so many different looks, he didn't know where to go with the ball. He started just kind of throwing the ball off you know, at that point, you know, so guys are fighting over interceptions. Aikman under the gun floats the pass, and it's intercepted by Mayano. Mayano gets up, runs across the 50, and he's tackled at the 46 yard line. We just dominated them in every way possible that you could dominate them. Troy Aikman backs up. He's hemmed in and they get him again! They get him again and this time it is Clyde Simmons with his fourth. If he is an NFC Defensive Player of the Week, I don't know who is. Sacks were coming everywhere, you know, and Reggie, our leader of the team, he was like, man, we don't go get mine. You know, we don't go get mine. Aikman again, looking over the middle. Comes away from one man and they get him again! Here they get him again, and this time it's Reggie White. Every defensive lineman who played that day got a sack. Aikman again looks downfield. He's hit again, and the football comes loose, and the Eagles are on it, as Aikman has been sacked for the 11th time today. The sack went to Mike Pitts. 11 sacks? I mean, Clyde had four of them by himself. I remember that. We sacked him 11 times, but we hit him probably a 15 or 16 times. I can remember hitting Troy and, and hearing him just squeal, you know, like a little girl. And that was worth 10 sacks by itself. Those are the kind of things that, you know, you take pride in and you say, hey, that day, I was pretty good. And it was just a great defensive day and one of those days where on a bad day, you slip in the tape and you watch that game and afterwards you're feeling all right. Back at Texas Stadium where the Eagles have blasted the Dallas Cowboys 24 to nothing. When you talk about the Eagles defense today, they were awesome. So totally dominating. Uh, a defensive performance that included 11 sacks, the most in club history. The four defenses I think people talk about the most is the 85 Bears, probably the 86 Giants, uh, the 2000, 2001 Ravens, and probably us. Up front, you can have an argument that the Eagles front was the best of all of them. If we won a Super Bowl, there's no doubt in my mind that they would be talking about us as one of the top two or three defenses ever. That was the most disappointing part about it. We didn't feel like we accomplished everything that we had set out to do, and that was to get into the playoffs and go on to win the Super Bowl. I look back each Super Bowl, it's annual. You think about the missed opportunities. It was disappointing, very disappointing. We felt like we should have been in the playoffs. Unfortunately, we lost some games. I always thought if we got to a championship game, defensively, we would 
get ourselves to the Super Bowl. Every Super Bowl Sunday, you make the phone calls and the what ifs, and it's still really difficult for me because unfortunately, I wasn't able to play in the Super Bowl, and I know Seth was, but again, you talk to Seth and it's not the same. That ring, is it a prized possession of mine? Absolutely, because it's always been a career goal of mine to win a Super Bowl. It does not carry the same weight that it would have had it had an eagle on it, and I shared it with Jerome Brown and Clyde Simmons and Eric Allen and Byron Evans and Wes Hawkins and all the boys. It was a bittersweet year because you remember what ifs.